This is my blog post on the sculpture of the Minuteman by Henry Hudson Kitson. Daniel Chester French's Minuteman in Concord, Massachusetts is the famous one, the one you've probably seen pictures of. I'm really fond of all French's works, especially the continents in Manhattan, but I like Kitson's Minuteman better than French's. And I could tell you why, but if you've been reading my books, I think you should try and figure out if you agree and why. Kitson made a number of notable sculptures of American heroes, which you can see if you look up his Wikipedia page. Now for Point of Impact, a refresher on Lexington and Concord. By 1775, American colonists and the British were on a collision course. The Stamp Act, imposed in 1765 to defray the cost of defending the colonies from the French and the Indians, was followed by the Townshend Acts in 1767, the Boston Massacre in 1770, that's at the upper left, and the Boston Tea Party in 1773, that's the lower right. In 1774, the First Continental Congress resolved to boycott British goods, provoking, among other responses, Samuel Seabury's free thoughts on the proceedings of the Continental Congress and Alexander Hamilton's full vindication of the measures of the Congress in 1774. A long quote from Hamilton, which helped explain why he became such a prominent writer among the Founding Fathers. Because this is an early work, mind you. And first, let me ask those restless spirits whence arises that violent antipathy they seem to entertain, not only to the natural rights of mankind, but to common sense and common modesty. That they are enemies to the natural rights of mankind is manifest, because they wish to see one part of their species enslaved by another. That they have an invincible aversion to common sense is apparent in many respects. They endeavor to persuade us that the absolute sovereignty of Parliament does not imply our absolute slavery. That it is a Christian duty to submit, to be plundered of all we have, merely because some of our fellow subjects are wicked enough to require it of us. That slavery, so far from being a great evil, is a great blessing. And even that our contest with Britain is founded entirely upon the petty duty of three pence per pound on East India tea. Whereas the whole world knows it is built upon the interesting question whether the inhabitants of Great Britain have a right to dispose of the lives and properties of the inhabitants of America or not. That's the end of the Hamilton quote. Civil disobedience turned to outright rebellion a few months later. In April 1775, British soldiers stationed in Boston were ordered to march on Concord, some 30 miles away, in order to confiscate weapons and ammunition that the colonials had stockpiled there. Warned of the British Army's plans, the American militia rushed to cut them off, facing the British in a skirmish at Lexington and then at the Old North Bridge across the Concord River. The British routed retreated to Boston. In all, 49 Americans and 83 British died. Uh, these are contemporary prints of the events at Lexington and Concord, and if you want more contemporary written sources on this whole period, I have a blog post on Diane Durante Writer about the 20 years leading up to the American Revolution. DianeDuranteWriter.com has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, Central Park, and my other obsessions. To join the free Sunday Recommendations email list, visit the URL online or email me. And you can say, well done, Diane, or support my work on a recurring basis and receive rewards by means of the tip jar on dianedurantywriter.com. Thank you, as always, for listening.